got sound cues within ambient sound actors can bring your level to life, but the sounds are always played at the locations of the actors. If you have lots of actors, this can create a sense of an active world, but it's also a lot of work. For example, here you can see the demonstration project with just as ambient sound actors selected. It also raises the age-old philosophical question, if a tree falls in a forest and there is no one there, does it make a sound? We might add hundreds of ambient sound actors to our world, but if the player never passes them, then they will never be heard. Could it be more efficient to actually spawn the sounds around the player themselves? We'll show you how to make a reusable blueprint that does just this. So in our audio blueprints folder, we'll right click, blueprint class, actor, we'll create a new blueprint called audio, POS, player oriented sound, demo, and we'll open that up. Now just like we did with the audio trigger, we're going to create a collision component here. Let's start with a sphere collision. And in the construction script, we're going to drag out from that and set its radius, promote its radius to a variable called radius. And we're gonna make that public so that this can be specific and unique to each instance of this actor that we might choose to place in the world. While we're here, let's compile that and set a default value for that, 1500. Now in our event graph, we're going to select the sphere and create an event for collision on component begin overlap. In other words, when the player walks through this component. We also want to turn the system off when the player walks out of it. So we're gonna select the sphere, right click, add an event collision on component end overlap. Now what we're gonna do with this is start a timer which is gonna be kind of the equivalent of the looping delay systems that we've used in the past within a sound queue. So we're gonna say timer by function name here. And when we come out, we want to clear that timer. So let's find the clear timer node here. And we're gonna call this function sound trig and duplicate it here, sound trig. And what that function is actually going to do is to trigger this custom event that's going to actually fire off our sound. So if we create a custom event with the same name, then this timer, well, we'll set it to loop for the moment. As it loops around every three seconds, it's gonna make an event come out of here. And that's going to spawn our sound at location. Let's make that sound a public variable so that we can edit it there. And let's, for the moment, just play it to the player. So we're going to get player character, we're going to get its location, compile the blueprint. In our level, we're going to go to the Magic Forest and we're going to get a copy of that blueprint in here. You can see its default radius there, which I think we're going to leave for the moment. I'm going to give it a sound, so I'm going to select my audio folder and find one of my creatures, which I think is going to be that one. Now. On the outside of this, we won't hear any one shots at all. And then as we go in, that timer should start and we should hear one of the creature sounds being played every three seconds. There you go. And as we come out, it switched that timer off so the creatures have stopped. The next thing we want to do to make the timing feel a bit more natural is to create a random float in range. So we can set a minimum maximum time for this timer to use. Again, we'll promote these to variables so that they're editable. And we'll call this time min and time max. Now at the moment, when we collide with this, the timer is going to grab a random float within this range, and it's gonna loop, so it's just gonna carry on using that same timing. What we want to do is to re-trigger it so that it pulls in a new random time each occasion. So we've already used this idea of custom events and functions, so if we create a new custom event over here, and we call it re-trigger, just attach that there, compile the blueprint, and here, after we've played our sound, that's when we want to reset the timer with a new time. So if we drag out here and we start typing retrigger, you can see we've actually got a function there that's gonna go back and call this custom event. So this is really useful 
have it to get into because it avoids the whole spider's web type blueprints, which I'm sure you've seen. It keeps things neat and tidy. We'll make those to public. And then the next thing we want to do is to pick a random location around the player character. So we're going to break this vector into its x, y, and z coordinates. And we're going to create a new float variable called distance. Let's change that into a float. We're going to use distance to constrain a, a random float that we're then going to add to these x, y, z coordinates. So let's just create a few float add floats and connect them up. Here we're going to create our random float in range again. We're going to use distance into the max. So this at the moment would create a number between zero and whatever we set the distance from. And we could add that to the player's current x location. Let's generate a new different number for the y location. Now with z, I don't really want sound spawning underneath the player. So I'm going to constrain this a little bit and just set it to something like 200. So it's never going to go out of range. We're going to come back and do something different with these values in the next tutorial. So this will be sufficient for the moment. Now we'll make vector and combine those back into the vector, send that to the sound location. Now, if we played this as it stands, we'd get the sounds always coming from the front of the player and always to the right because we don't actually have any negative values. We're only ever adding positive values to the X and Y of the player's location. So let's create a float minus float. And if we do zero, take away the distance, that's going to give us a negative number for our X and Y locations. What we could do at this point is put a print string here so that we, we can actually see the values that are coming out of this vector and just check that everything's working. But we're actually going to go one step further than that so we can actually visualize these sounds. Back in our audio blueprints folder, let's right click, create another blueprint class. This time let's call it POS test visualizer. Open that up. And in here, I'm going to add a static mesh component so that we can actually see this appear in the level. Now, if we look here, we've got lots of different ones to choose from. I'm going to just choose the editor help, which is this big question mark here. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Change the scale, compile, and save that. So in our player-oriented sound, what we're going to do at the end here is actually spawn actor from class, the new class we just created, which is called POS Test Visualizer. And we're going to spawn that at the location of the sound. So if we grab this vector and add it to spawn transform, it will convert it into the numbers required to put that in the right place. So what we should have now is a overlap, starts our timer off, picks a random value, triggers this custom event, which spawns a sound, gets the player's location, it gets whatever you've set the distance to be, and it creates a random values up to the maximum of that distance. It adds them to the player location, spawns the sound there, and at the same time, it spawns a little visualizer so that we can actually see what's going on. So let's make distance public just before we go back and compile, find our POS demo here. So let's say between one and four seconds, I want to spawn the sound up to a maximum of, let's say, 1,000 units. Be careful here, obviously, you're not going to spawn a sound that's further away than its attenuation settings. Otherwise, we won't hear the sound. And let's try that. So we see the visualizer appearing. I'm just going to press F, which we've got set up in the demonstration project as a kind of flying camera so we can have a look at what's going on a bit more clearly. So now you can see with this blueprint, we've got sounds being spawned at a random time in a random position around the player. You've got a reusable blueprint that you can take into any project. And depending on the nature of your project, that might be a more efficient way of generating one shots than simply adding loads of ambient sound actors to your map.